Today, let's talk about the CSS Clip Path property. It's popular in modern web design. Designers now use interesting and creative shapes to make websites look unique. Forget boring boxes and long before and after code with Clip Path. You can now create cool shapes using just one line of CSS. With this property, you can crop images into image masks, add stylish hover effects, design eye-catching layouts, Clip Path helps you do all of this without any extra elements. First, we'll learn the basic shapes you can create with Clip Path. Let's start with a basic box element with a background and size to 200 pixels by 200 pixels. Now, let's talk about circles using Clip Path. The Clip Path circle function lets you show only a circular part of an element. The basic syntax is Clip path circle, radius at CX CI radius, is the size of the circle. CX and CI define the center's coordinates, positioning it on the element. Let's see examples. Here's a circle with a 50 pixel radius, centered at 100 pixels from the left and 100 pixels from the top. You can also use percentages. A radius of 50% creates a circle that perfectly fills the element centered within it. You can also position the circle's center at the edges or corners. Here, the center is at the top left corner, zero pixels from the left and zero pixels from the top, making a quarter circle. For easier positioning, use keywords like left, top, right, and bottom. Left top is the same as zero, zero, just more readable for the top left corner. So that's the basics of circular clip path. Up next, we'll explore the ellipse shape. If you understand the circle, ellipse is very similar but more flexible. It lets you crop elements into oval shapes. Unlike a circle with one radius, an ellipse has two, one for the x-axis and one for the y-axis. The basic syntax is clip path, ellipse, rx, ry at cx, cy, rx for the horizontal radius, ry for the vertical radius. Cx and psi define the center of the ellipse just like with circle. Let's see some examples. This creates an ellipse with an 80 pixel wide and 50 pixel tall, centered in the element at 50%, 50%. You can also use the keyword center, which automatically centers the ellipse. You can mix percentages and pixel values for the radius as well. Using percentages for the radius makes the ellipse responsive, scaling with the element's size. Next, let's dive into the inset shape. The inset function lets you crop a rectangular area from an element like padding that hides the outer edges. The basic syntax is clip path, inset, top right, bottom left round, border radius. The values define how much to cut from each side. Visible area is inside. The optional round keyword use it to add corner radius of the inset area, just like border radius. Let's look at some examples. This insets the element by 20 pixels from the top, 30 pixels from the right, 40 pixels from the bottom, and 10 pixels from the left, with a 10 pixel corner radius. You can also use multiple border radius values. Here, the top left and bottom right corners have a 15 pixel radius, while the top right and bottom left have zero. For sharp corners, omit round and the radius values. This creates a rectangular inset with the specified values and no rounded corners. For equal insets on all sides, use a single value. This insets the element by 20 pixels from all four sides. Next, we'll explore the polygon shape. Polygon, you can create any custom shape by defining points using X and Y coordinates. Anything outside these points gets clipped. The basic syntax is clip path, polygon open parenthesis X, 1, Y, 1, X, 2, Y, 2, X, 3, Y, 3, and so on. Each X, Y pair is a point, connected in order to form the shape, with the last point automatically connected back to the first. You can use pixels, percentages, or other valid CSS units. Let's see some examples. We'll start by defining a few points. 0, 0 is the top left corner. 100% 0 is the top right corner. 100% 80% is near the bottom right, but only 80% down. 0, 100% is the bottom left corner. When you connect these points in order, it creates a slanted rectangle. Here we used calculate function to make a responsive bottom edge that adjusts based on screen width. By adding more points, you can create complex shapes like hexagons. 
perfect for custom icons or layout sections. Use it to design creative buttons, layout sections, or cool visual effects, all with just CSS. Next, we'll briefly explore the path function. To create this design with CSS clip path path function, we first need to understand the coordinates. We'll work in a 2D space where both the width and height of the element are 200 pixels. This lets us place points using X and Y values from 0 to 200. The first point is 10 pixels from the left X axis and 40 pixels from the top Y axis, so the coordinates are 10, 40. The second point is 70 pixels from the left and 40 from the top, 70, 40. The third point is 80 from the left and 30 from the top, 80, 30. Following this, we can determine all the necessary coordinates, and here is the final result. Once I have the coordinates, you can use clip path with the path function. Here's how it works. M tells the browser where to start the path. Z closes the path by connecting the last point to the first. I will select the first point at coordinates 10, 40, so the second point has coordinates 70, 40. To draw straight lines between points, we use the letter L line 2. Similarly, from this point to the next point at coordinates 80, 30 will also be connected by a line. So I will continue to connect the points together. Finally, the end point is also the starting point at this point. Very similar to the original design, right? The only thing that makes it not perfect is the curves in the design. But if you want curves instead of straight lines, use A for elliptical arc. A stands for arc and draws a smooth curve between two points. It has several parameters, X and Y radius of the ellipse, the X axis rotation, the large arc flag, and the sweep flag. For example, to create a curve between points at 70, 40, and 80, 10, use A instead of L. 10, 10 is the radius of the ellipse. The next three values are rotation, large arc flag, and sweep flag, usually set to zero. The sweep flag controls the curve direction, zero or one, 1 equals convex, 0 equals concave. If the curve goes the wrong way, just change the sweep flag. Repeat this for other segments. You can just change the value of sweep flag from 0 to 1 to change it to a convex ellipse. You can reuse this arc anywhere. Just update the coordinates and tweak the flags, and you'll get a complex shape with curves and edges, all in one line of CSS, with no images or SVGs needed. If the code looks too long, avoid wrapping it, as that may cause errors.